term was high. That's but, uh, awesome. I haven't heard that term before. Yeah. Busier than a one armed paper hanger. That is yeah. with hives. You gotta include with that. With hives. With hives. Um so while we wait on IQ Al Rizzoli, uh talk to us about what you think of this uh, Gavin Newsom DeSantis debate that Hannity's gonna do this evening. Well, you know, someone asked me another program this morning, uh, you know, it's like uh, having a ball where the queen and the king didn't arrive. I mean, without uh, pre uh, President Trump, it's useless, in my view. I, uh, You know, uh, um, the New York Times is saying that uh, it's going to uh, uh, really uh, uh, separate the men from the boys. Um uh, I heard from somebody in Washington and that said it, it's Newsom's um, the first attempt. To, he really thinks he has a chance of being the nominee this year, uh, 20, 24, because, because um, he, he, he believes, a lot of people believe that President Biden will not be the nominee. And uh, who knows? But I have a, another uh, I have another one for you. Apparently, somebody in Washington looked at uh, pr President Trump's uh, health record that uh, his doctor released and came up and said, hmm, there's something wrong there, and uh, glossing over. So now, rampant on the streets of Washington, and uh, as uh, you know, you can walk down on a block in Washington and get seven th different rumors, is that uh, President Trump has some sort of a problem. I don't yeah. believe it. But I wanted to pass it on. But, uh, yeah. That's... You know, he also 77. You know, um, uh, President Biden might be 81, but he's 77. You know? And well, yeah. the, there is something to be said, you know. I mean, I know I've slowed down. You know, and I, I'm only 80. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm only 80. <laughs> well, yeah. I know that, that Biden just. He just can't seem to get out of his own way. He, he just, I, 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 I just don't even know what to say ninety percent of the time when it comes to, uh, when it comes to well, old, uh, old Uncle Joe. Carl Rove. Rove had a very good column in today's Wall Street Journal, pointing out that the, the team that uh, is now uh, directing the presidential campaign are really amateurs in comparison to uh, who uh, led President Obama's campaign. Uh, and he says he doesn't believe these people are capable of a victorious campaign. So you can take that for what it's worth. Yes. Well, I think we're going to move up our, our guest we were going to have at the middle of the hour. We're going to move them up to now because... And I believe they've got, I, I believe we've got them. Josh Bernstein, can you hear me, sir? Oh. I think. He supposedly has joined us, and then he left. Let's see. Let me call him back. Let's see what happens here. We're supposed to have Josh on with us. I want to make sure I get the right damn phone number. No, I do not have their, well, okay. We'll just see what happens here. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll do this. We will, uh. We will, as they say, we will try to do better, as they say. I don't, know if, you? I don't know if that's possible. I don't know if that's I'm possible sorry, to do better. But the person you called has a voicemail box that has not been set up yet. Okay. Goodbye. Well, okay. Hey. There he is. Josh Bernstein, how are you, sir? I'm doing good. How are you? Pretty good, actually. Well, uh, we, are, we, we have got Don Mazzella, and we've got Josh, but we don't have an IQ. But we don't have an IQ. We're not that smart then, I guess. <laughs> so, so Josh, um, Don and I were talking about this Gavin Newsom debate that's going to be taking place tonight on Hannity. Um, I secretly think that this is a programming job by everybody because they're like, well, you want to get used to these two guys because they're going to be running against each other. <laughs> kind of. Oh, well, that's certainly one way to look at it. 
Um, I was going to watch it, but I heard that there was a synchronized swimming competition on from Frog Balls, Kentucky instead. <laughs> so I may not watch it, but no, I'll probably get highlights or lowlights of it uh, because, again, you know, I cover everything in the news. But here's the thing. I clearly, Gruesome Newsome, who I've dubbed the Ted Bundy of politicians, uh, clearly is running a shadow presidential campaign. Is he going to be on the ballots? No. Is Big Mike going to be on the ballots? No. But what's going to happen at the convention? You know, I just had Marjorie Taylor Greene on my show, and we both agree with the same assessment. They're going to allow him to have the nomination up until a certain point. I believe they're going to make sure that he doesn't have all the nomination, you know, all the delegates needed and superdelegates and all that, and they're going to go to the convention contested. And I think at that point... They're going to lull the American people into thinking that it's Trump versus Biden, and I think they're going to put either Gruesome Newsome or Big Mike on the ticket. Wow. Don, your thoughts on this, my friend? I've heard that scenario before. Uh, it it um, stops on only one thing. Will, will President uh, Biden's ego permit it? That, well, I don't. I don't think he knows what his ego is. I don't think he knows who he is. I think he's shaking hands with the air and, you know, probably soiling himself on a daily basis. So, I, I can't imagine them sticking with him uh, as their nominee for the party because I think that obviously gives a huge advantage to President Trump. Well, don't forget the Republicans stuck with Robert Dole when they knew he was a loser. Um, you know. It is a very interesting, it's a very interesting um, comment. But let me ask you this question: What do you think about Koch endorsing Nikki? Well, look, you know, I always thought that the Democrats were really, really, really good at wasting money, but the Republicans are giving them a, a good run for their money. Actually, uh, I mean, it's like betting on a horse with a broken leg in the Kentucky Derby. I mean, it's not going anywhere. So if they want to waste money, uh, I, you know, go ahead and do it. I think they'd be better off taking that money and putting it towards America First, MAGA type of candidates uh, running uh, across the country in 2024 and or giving it to the obvious nominee, which would be President Trump. So, uh, you know, if they want to waste uh, money, then uh, I guess they can. You don't think that she has a chance? No, of course not. <laughs> no. No. Was that a serious question, Don? It, it, it was that a serious, serious question? No, no, no. I know you, you, you believe that the nomination is wrapped up. Um, and uh, in many ways, I probably... I would agree. assume it is, yeah. Yeah, I would assume it is. Yeah, someone, a very smart man told me uh, about uh, the French dog and the fact that things happen in a year. Uh, so you you never know. I I was telling um, mm -hmm. um, Jiggy about the fact that somebody found something in the medical records that they released on the president that start, started all sorts of rumor in Washington, according to someone that uh, called me about it yes, uh, yesterday. Um, um, you know, you, you never know what what happens. That's the only reason I ask. Yeah, I mean, I interviewed Joel Gilbert recently, and Joel Gilbert is a uh, director, writer, producer. He's done quite a few things in Hollywood and things like that. But he's also come out and said, and he's put his career on the line. I mean, he's basically pulling a, uh, a Dick Morris for all intents and purposes and guaranteeing that uh, Michelle or Big Mike or whatever is going to jump into the race in December. Uh, I believe the deadline for being on uh, as a candidate, I think is December, is it 7th or 6th, somewhere around there, I can't remember. And so there's not much time left if that uh, is indeed the case. We'll have to see what happens. But it seems very unlikely that they would stick with uh, Joe Biden all the way to the end. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, unless they just have the whole thing baked in again and they stole it from Trump once, so they'll steal it from him a second time. I don't know. I don't know really the answer to that, but uh, it, it would. I'd be hard pressed to see him at the end uh, debating and, and all this other stuff as their nominee. But stranger things have happened. Well, uh, President Wilson um, campaigned uh, from uh, almost from his deathbed, 
So um, mm-hmm. uh, it, it's very interesting. I agree with you. I can't see him go, go walking on, on the stage with, with uh, President Trump. But uh, um, uh, every everybody I talk to, and admittedly they're all um, passing their prime, I uh, say the same <laughs> thing, that uh, knowing Joe Biden as they do, they can't see him giving it up. That's the point that the, they don't understand. Well, what they don't understand is, is he's not in control of that decision. Others are in control of that decision, namely Obama, possibly Klaus Schwab, possibly Xi Jinping, possibly you know so many others that, uh, that are out there, George Soros, who knows. So I don't think he's making any of these decisions. Certainly no decisions are being made for our country by him. I don't think any decisions have been made by him since uh, day one. I think it's been, uh, you know, a mixture of Barack Obama, Valerie Jarrett, Susan Rice, and uh, perhaps maybe even Maoist Millie and, uh, and Lloyd Austin. So I don't think there's really been major decisions made by, uh, by old Joe. Well, there's somebody that somebody somebody said to me uh, over the weekend. You, you, everybody uh, discounts Jill uh, Biden, but they say uh, she's a dragon lady, and, and that she really likes being um, a first lady, and she's the one that's really fiercely pushing Jill. What do you say to that? Well, I think she should be arrested for elder abuse if you really want to know the truth. Um, she obviously doesn't care about her husband. She cares about the position. She cares about the money. She cares about the status. But she certainly doesn't care about him or his health because she would have talked him out of running uh, back in uh, 2020 or 2019 when he was deciding. Um, so, again, you know, Jill is, you know, Jill is Jill. Um, you know, she should stick to uh, decorating Satan's den instead of the White House. Well, she, she she really likes being in the White House. I, I mean, more so than any other first lady um, in, in the last uh, tw- uh, 20 to 25 years. Oh, yeah. Jill loves being the first lady. <laughs> no, no. Uh, <laughs> don't discount our wives. They do uh, have certain sways on our life and, and our, dis- uh, our life decisions. Um, so, so here, let, here's the scenario. Let's say uh, he's uh, he's eating something and uh, he pulls a Joni Ertz today. Except there's no Rand Paul to save him. He ends up keeling over from a chicken salad sandwich. Now all of a sudden, what is Jill going to take his spot? And she's going to be the nominee? <laughs> I mean, she might as well. I mean, I don't think I don't see that happening. <laughs> People huh? tell me if she could, she would. But um, again, I have no idea. But the interesting thing is, uh, at the uh, M- Mrs. Carter's uh, funeral, that um, she really, she and Michelle uh, uh, supposedly let, kept themselves uh, very much apart, and the only one that t- that apparently w- was a diplomat was uh, President Bush's wife. Mm. Well, um, I'm not sure. I mean, Rosalind Carter. You know, I know she was like, what, 100 years old or 99, and Jimmy's still kicking. Uh, so uh, it seems like the old guard is finally finally passing on. I don't know. I, it reminds me of the Billy Joel song, Only the Good Die Young. You know, Henry Kissinger was 100. He's a bought and paid for, owned puppet by the CCP. He was a globalist. Uh, he obviously, you know, believes in all the globalism that's out there. He's been at Bohemian Grove. He's been at Davos, uh, you know, he's close with Klaus Schwab, so he was a terrible, terrible Secretary of State and National Security Advisor under two presidents, Nixon and Ford. So, uh, again, like I said, only the good die young. Hmm. Okay. Well, uh, we'll we'll, we'll leave that subject. uh... That's You're only going to get Josh Bernstein uncensored. Now, granted, I'll keep the, the language. It uh, won't be colorful because I'm on someone else's show, and I would never, ever put anyone else's show in jeopardy. But you're going to get the truth from me. <laughs> <laughs> what is the truth? Is the truth is that Henry Kissinger uh, 
you know, was a terrible human being, was yes. a terrible diplomat, yes. sold out America, yes. uh, you know, normalized <laughs> relations with the Chinese. I, I mean, the list is endless. So, again, you know, in Washington, he was a god, right? Of oh, course. very much but so. But anywhere else he wasn't. Yeah, I'll, I'll ask the question. Should, should they have kept China isolated? Is, is that your belief? Well, I didn't believe in the ping-pong diplomacy of Nixon. Uh, why on earth would you take a communist regime and normalize relations with them and bring them into the World Trade Organization and normalize them and bring them in to, uh, you know, past third world status and into first country status? Why would we do that? What would be the advantage other than selling out America for Chinese goods and services and sending all of our jobs and manufacturing over to China? What's the purpose? All we did was fuel the, the PLA, the People's Liberation Army. All we did was create more and more from, from uh, what was his name, Jun, Jun Tao, I can't think of his first name, yeah. the, the first dictator, to now this dictator. Uh, all we've done is normalize China's behavior. Meanwhile, there's over a million Uyghur Muslims sitting in concentration camps, and yet we're, you know, bowing down to the Chinese, never holding them accountable for COVID, even though, of course, we're co-conspirators in that. Uh, so, yeah, I think, uh, you know, I think we should have never normalized relations with China. We should have never given them the leg up that they needed to uh, to join the uh, WTO. Mm. It's interesting. Uh, we have such diametrically opposed uh, uh, thoughts on that, but uh, um, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to debate it here. But uh, 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 if I recall correctly, and I still do, the creation of the middle class is the way the way to create a uh, more uh, peaceful China. It might take a couple more decades, but it'll happen. That's not well, I, I think, you know, you have to understand that the young people in China now have basically realized that they have no future. It's communism. They're told what they can do, where they can go, what their credit scores, what their social scores are, what kind of job they can have. And so they're rebelling by, uh, I think it's called Mi Lai, where they're basically, it's called Lie Down. They're basically checking out of Chinese society. And, of course, it's draining financially, the, uh, the CCP, the economy. Um, you've got Evergreen going down. You've got other companies going down. Tencent right now, stock is falling. So again, I would love to see the CCP go down, uh, it, but it can't come, at least I don't think, from you know America, because we're not strong. I mean, hell, we couldn't beat the Ethiopian army right now if we had to. I mean, let's face it, all of our weapons and weaponry and everything is in Ukraine or in uh, Talabamistan. So I think that China is growing in strength, but they're also losing their middle class. They're, us they're losing manufacturing. A lot of companies are now leaving China, mainly because of COVID and Corona and all that. So I would love to see them implode, but uh, the only ones that are going to take out the Chinese CCP uh, more than likely are going to be people in China. Well, that, that goes without saying. I, I think it's uh, at least 10 years away. Uh, let's hope we can uh, weather the 10 years. Well, that's the thing. What are they going to drop in the next year, year and a half? That'd be worse than COVID that, you know, could, you know, could kill so many more people. I mean, you know, when you don't hold people accountable for doing something bad, then that negative behavior is going to continue because they're going to be emboldened because they haven't been stopped. Mm. And so then what happens is America looks weak, which of course we are, extremely weak. Our military is pathetic, let's face it. I don't mean the, the soldiers, but I do mean the, you know, the military leaders, if you want to call them leaders. Uh, you know, and it's just a disgrace what they have done, of, of course, to the soldiers. I mean, you need the soldiers to fight wars, but yet you're killing the soldiers and you're giving them 973% increases in heart failure according to the newest studies out there and whistleblowers. So, uh, you know, what can I tell you? I mean, we're in a bad situation. We're pissing off a nuclear power in Russia just to hide Joe Biden's crime family syndicate crimes, basically. Uh, we're giving all of our money and resources over there. We've got the border wide open. Uh, look, I'll say this. 
Elon Musk is not anti-Semitic. I'm Jewish, both parents, proud. And what he said about the ADL is absolutely correct. Joel Greenblatt, or whoever runs it, is a total commie, completely. And the great replacement theory is not a conspiracy theory. It is real. It's happening in the United States of America. It's happening in Europe. It's happening in Ireland. It's happening everywhere. Because the globalists control immigration. That's why the, the uh, European Union was one of the worst things that could have ever have happened to Europe. And I understand after the war, they all got together, reconstruction, big deal. But now they control the borders. Brussels controls the borders. And until they get rid of or leave the European Union, then it's going to be the same way. And ours is just as bad. I think the number of illegal aliens in America is probably somewhere between 58 and 62 million by now. That would be my guess. Wow. Well, let me ask you this. Um, how do you explain the uh, support for Hamas in, uh, in our schools today? I mean, that's the thing that really surprises mm -hmm. me about, uh, about this whole thing. It, it doesn't surprise me because most professors are atheists. Most, most professors are Marxists. And most professors basically support communist regimes and or authoritarian regimes. And obviously Israel is not that. And so, of course, they're going to rewrite history. These are people that support, you know, the Nazis. And uh, they allow this on campus, which is frightening, obviously, number one. But number two, many of the graduates, many of the board of directors, many of the regents and all that, they're all Jews. So yes. thankfully... They're pulling their money out of these colleges, and these colleges hopefully are going to go broke. Well, stop there a second. If you look at at faculties across the country, there's such a strong um, influx of Jews in faculty. Yet, how do they? Uh, per, how is it that uh, Hamas could uh, generate such support? Given, uh, I mean, a couple of the president of some of these Ivy League schools are Jewish women, mm -hmm. and they're sitting yep. there, you, you know? Uh, you want me to tell you the truth? I'll tell you the reason. You're not going to like it. Because they're liberals first and Jews second. That's it why. can't be. You, you, they you, are. I'm sorry. You got, you're Jewish first. You, hey, you, no, you're you, not. No, you're not. There's 80% of Jews in America are liberal first and Jewish second, okay? There are very few conservative Jews that would actually put you know, the, their own people first before anything else. I always say this, Jews that vote for the Democrat Party are like chickens, you know, that are rooting for Colonel Sanders or turkeys that are celebrating Thanksgiving. It's the same exact thing. And until Jews wake up and realize in this country that the best friend to the Jewish people and to Israel is the evangelical right, then they're not going to be in, in the situation that they're in. And I would only hope and pray that this woke up enough liberal Jews to vote for Trump and Republicans in 2024. But to be quite honest, as smart as Jews are, as far as intellectual and business and everything else, they're pretty stupid when it comes to uh, common sense. Well, Josh, you said it. I can't say it. Otherwise, they'd be... Nope. <laughs> <laughs> No, no. Let's no. hope the ADL gets a chance to hear this one. Yeah. I'd love to debate that fool. Yeah, but no, it's really interesting. It's um, uh, I've been talking to people across the country on this <clears throat> issue, and it, 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 the the depth of the Hamas support on campus, um, it, it, it's surprising an awful lot of people, and. Um, and shocking, forget the word surprising, shocking people. And you, you sit there, and, and the reaction of the administration to all this is the second part of it. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Well, let's talk about it. Who funded the operation? We did. This illegitimate government committed treason multiple times, but this recent time, they funded it by giving all those billions of dollars to Iran, which then, of course, funded Hamas and funded this operation. I mean, you know, so we're looking at it saying that we're outraged on one end, but yet we funded it. 
And so when Jews continue to vote Democrat, you're funding your own demise. You're asking to be killed, in my opinion. And again, it's really sad. It's sick. It's amazing to me that Jewish Americans are not intelligent enough to wake up and realize that continuing to vote for left-wing causes eventually, because these people are all anti-Semitic on the left, is going to be a problem for Jews in America. So it's just ridiculous. It truly is. But I can only hope and pray that those numbers of Jewish voters in 2024 reaches somewhere around 35, 40 percent, if not higher. It doesn't seem that way, but then I don't know. No, because they're pretty stupid. I would never say any Jew I met was stupid. Oh, I would. I've met a lot of them. Liberal Jews are some of the dumbest people on planet Earth. They truly are because they're intelligent. They're the chosen people. They're smart. They're articulate. They're educated. They're in the upper echelon of society. But yet the reason a lot of them are socially stupid uh, has to do with Jewish guilt. You know, they feel guilty being the, quote, chosen people. And so what do they do? They try to bring people up that around them that are not at the same socioeconomic status. But what they don't understand is by doing that, they're voting for people that are anti-Semitic. So it becomes a suicide vote. Jews need to wake up and realize the evangelical right is the only ones that would protect everybody, including Jews, if, God forbid, there was any type of invasion by Islam or anything else into this country. And liberal Jews don't understand that. It's pretty sad. My family included, many of them in my family included. I have, I'd be interested in seeing Thanksgiving dinner with, with your family, you and your family. <laughs> well, we have a rule, because uh, we usually go to my mother's, uh, we're not allowed to wear political T-shirts, my wife and I, and uh, we keep the conversation uh, basically off of politics, which does kind of suck. But the rule is, if anyone brings it up, I finish it. So that's fine. <laughs> that, <laughs> is, that is fun. Go ahead, Don. <laughs> no, well, let me, uh, in the Wall Street Journal, again, my favorite publication, if you haven't figured it out, there was an interesting thing that the number of gun ownership amongst blacks and Hispanics has gone uh, gone up higher than uh, whites and Republicans. Did you see that, um, Josh? And uh, do you think that will translate into votes for for uh, Republicans in uh, 24? You know, I hope so. I, I've been saying for many many years the magic number is 40 and 25, 40 percent of the Hispanic vote and 25% of the black vote. And that is enough of the Democrat base uh, to where they can't really win elections or compete. Right now, those numbers are 42% for the Hispanic vote and 22% for the black vote. So with the 10 to 12% voter fraud ratio that Democrats are always going to perpetrate in every election, you really need to kick those numbers up a little higher. So you need to be about 50 to 51, 52% of the Hispanic vote and I would say a comfortable 35% of the black vote. And if you can somehow pull out 35, 40% of the Jewish vote, then I think Trump can win this, uh, especially with RFK uh, pulling a lot of votes away from uh, Joe Biden. And don't believe the, the hype and the BS out there that says that RFK Jr. hurts Trump. That is a bunch of garbage. It is not true whatsoever at all. And they know it. That's why they're saying it, because they're trying to get them out. Hmm. Well, did you, see, uh, uh, did you see that the bookstores in America, uh, America are not taking it? RFK's book? They're not um, uh, the, uh, the Independent Bookstore Association uh, are not taking orders for his book? I don't know if you saw that. I, I didn't. He'll be able to sell his books other places. But you know what's amazing, and I've said this before, for the Democratic Party, their standard bearer, who they looked up to, was JFK, was a Kennedy. Now a Kennedy is running, and you know they're looking at him like he's Donald Trump's you know, uh, long-lost cousin, basically. And it's just amazing to me. But you know, the, the key here, let's not forget, Jill Stein is the one that won the election in 2016, clearly, because she was and got enough votes and was on the ballots in Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Georgia, you know, Arizona, all those places. And that took a lot of votes away from Hillary. And that's why, 
you know, Donald Trump won with, you know, 48,000 in one state, 17,000 in another state, 62,000 in another state. So, but that, if you look at that, was 6% of the electorate. In 2020, the problem was there was no third parties, really. I don't even think they registered 2% of the entire vote. So if RFK is in, maybe maybe Joe Manchin is in, maybe uh, Colonel West is in, you know, maybe a couple other people are in, let's get that number around 9 10 11% of the independent vote, and Trump has a very good chance at winning if that vote for the independent is high enough because it'll take away from the Democrats' votes. Well, what about the the senator from uh, West Virginia who's just retiring? Um, uh, the name is right now. Uh, Mansion. Yeah. By he's the way, he's you know, Italian, don't you? He's what? They dropped the I at the end. Oh, Mancini? Yeah. Mancini? The, what, he's the Italian. fighter? Yeah, I'm, are we thinking of the boxer? What was his name? Ray Boom Boom Mancini? Oh, that's right. No, the senator, is, <laughs> he's Italian. Yeah, I know who he is. Yeah, Joe Manchin. I know, I know exactly who you're talking about. He's uh, saved us a couple of times on legislation, along with uh, Kirsten Sinema here. Uh, again, neither one of them are conservatives, but they have at least stopped uh, Biden you know, uh, previously with really bad legislation, so I'm thankful for that. But look, if he runs as an independent, go for it. You know, I want to see him in every state on every ballot because he'll take votes away clearly from uh, from the Democrats. He's not going to take votes away from Trump. Trump has his base of support and his base of support is huge. It's very strong. Yeah, of course, you have never Trumpers. You, you have these idiots in the establishment that aren't going to vote for him no matter what. OK, fine. But he has enough votes. But what he does need help with in order to win this is a robust independent vote where people say, I don't like Trump, I don't like Biden, so I'm going to vote for this guy. And when they vote for whoever that person is in the middle, it's normally going to take more votes away from Democrats than it will Republicans. I, I, I tend to agree with you, but I'm going to back up a minute and go back to what you said <laughs> uh, 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 originally at the start of this. You, do, do you, you believe that uh, Biden will not be the candidate in 24 and at some point he'll step aside for someone someone else am i here did i hear that correctly you did hear that correctly i i wouldn't say it's a definitive you know um prediction but it seems as though gavin gruesome newsome right now is running a shadow campaign he cleaned up the streets of uh California for his communist comrade dictator Xi Jinping, you wouldn't do it for his constituents, right? He doesn't care about them. They can wallow in, you know what, on the streets all they want. But he did it for them. He did it for Xi Jinping. So then he goes to China, right, falls all over some little chubby Chinese kid, gets a photo op and all that. So he's doing some type of thing behind the scenes. I think it's already been worked out. I think the big wigs at the DNC are pushing Gavin and getting Gavin to go on these trips and having Xi Jinping meet with him because they're figuring out a way to steal it for 2024. And they want someone that they can control even more than the dementia patient. So I think that Gavin certainly could be um, the person they put on at a contested convention uh, at the very end. And that would be sad because all these people would be lulled into thinking that this is a Trump versus Biden race. And in the end, it likely will not be. Remind me, I was trying to figure it out today. Which convention is first, the Democrat or the Republican next year? That's a good question. Um, I don't know the answer to that. I, I, don't. I don't either. I, I, I'd I, have to look it up. I thought the Democrats were first and Trump second, but somebody said just the opposite. Yeah. Are you looking it up? Yes, I no, am. No, I'm, I'm not right now because I, I don't have the I chance. I am looking but, uh, it up. Apparently, the okay. Democratic National Convention is scheduled for August 19th yeah. through the 22nd, 2024. Okay. So that would mean the Republicans, because that, that sounds... Okay, the Republicans is July 15th through the 18th. Okay. In Milwaukee, so Wisconsin. 
So the critical time is between the Republican convention and the Democratic convention, if, if I'm hearing Josh correctly. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think uh, by next uh, this coming August, uh, we could possibly see a, a little switcheroo happen. I, I do think that that's a possibility. I think they need someone to put up as a figurehead, uh, you know, that can articulate and you know can lie to the people with a straight face, not shake hands with the air or call his wife his sister or you know all these other crazy <laughs> things. Sniff that's right. sniff people, you know, sniff little children and all this other stuff. So Gavin is, you know, well-dressed, well-spoken, articulate. He's a younger guy, and uh, he's dangerous because, like I said, he reminds me of Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy was uh, an absolute ruthless killer, but he had a nice smile. He dressed well. He was smart. He was articulate. He was intelligent. I see the same thing with Gavin Newsom, and I think he's dangerous, truly dangerous, even more dangerous, honestly, than Big Mike. So... We'll see what happens. Hmm. It's interesting. I like your thinking, Josh. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you you guys agree on 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 more than you uh, than you disagree on. Oh, I, I respect Josh greatly uh, for what he's trying to do. Um, yeah, we got to get you over to the conservative side, there, Don. You're I, much more. You're much more GOP establishment. Well, what can I say? I'm, 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 <laughs> what can I uh, say, says Mazzella? I'm what can you say? I don't know. Be a nationalist, populist, America first MAGA supporter through and through. Oh, I, I wouldn't <laughs> quite go that far. I uh, wouldn't go that far. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. What, what, go that far. What I want is uh, for Amer uh, America first and everything else is second. I mean, uh, well, good. That we agree on. America first, everything else is second. Yeah. Absolutely. There yeah. you go. Uh, you know, the, uh, it, unfortunately, other people think differently, and that, that's the problem. Uh, right. Uh, you know, because. Uh, Including the majority of the GOP. <laughs> Including the, the I, I don't understand where the Democratic Party went, went to. You know? Um, uh, where did they go? Well, I guess they went to North Korea. They went to, uh, you know, Tehran. Uh, they went to every other, you know, communist country. They went to Shanghai. I mean, their ideology is now hardcore communist. Answer everybody, shut everybody down. They say they do. They say it's a big open tent. But they don't want you in it, you know. So, again, but the Republicans are almost as bad. Look, I've said this before. I've called them the global credit party of Washington. They don't serve their constituents. They don't care about the voters, honestly, because you know what? Voters are not paying their salaries anymore. Klaus Schwab is. Yep. George Soros is. The World Economic Forum is. Bohemian Grove is. Davos is. Uh, you know, the Bilderbergs is, Bill Gates is. Those are the people, Bezos, those are the people that are paying their salaries, not their constituents, not the voters. So, again, we have an extremely broken system where they no longer listen to us or work for us, and they are rogue actors, and that's a problem, and it's in both parties. This is not a one-party situation. This is in both parties. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again, and I started talking about it in 2021, maybe even in 2020. We need to punish the two-party duopoly, and there needs to be a new Patriot Party. If President Trump would have started a Patriot Party, he would have had 50 million people join in the first 30 days and another 30 million more yep. in the next 90 days. We wouldn't have had 2022 stolen from us, a la Oz. Tudor Dixon, of course, Kerry Lake. I mean, these are all races that Republicans clearly won. We would not be suffering with the special election, you know, losses that we just had recently. And who knows what's going to be for 2024, you know? And so that's the problem. That is the problem. 
I won't disagree with you. I, uh, um, uh, I'm, I'm not going to disagree with you. I, I have my doubts, but that's uh, that's not the newsman in me. Uh, <laughs> what, what, what can I uh, what, what can I say? You know, this columnist John Molshine from the Star Ledger in Newark, he said he admired politicians until he got to cover them. Yeah, well, you know what they say, politicians are like dirty diapers. They need to be changed and changed often. <laughs> <laughs> the trouble is, they just, and like in New York City, they, they passed that law. So what do they do? They just exchange uh, uh, seats. They go from one thing to another. Yeah. They, they, you know, um, uh, the interesting thing is I saw a statistic, which I, I can't quote f- fully, but it, but it said that the 70, 70 odd percent of American politicians, local, state, and federal, have never uh, met a payroll. Oh, know? yeah. Yeah, I believe that. Absolutely. You know, I was talking to my 17 year old son, and we were talking about politics, and this was a couple of months ago. And he said, You know, Dad, I think we'd be better off with a litocracy. And I was like, What do you mean? He goes, you know, a lotto. And I started thinking about it. You know what? He's right. We would have better luck picking people out of, well, obviously there's no phone books anymore, but, you know, that type of thing, just randomly and saying, okay, you are now going to run for the House or the Senate. You're going to be here for two years or four years, and that's it, and then your term limited, and that's the end of that. And honestly, that would be better than what we have now, truly, because they recruit the wildest, most radical extremist people. You know, you've got groups like Justice Democrats. I mean, you do know that AOC, Ilhan Omar, uh, Rashida Tlaib, and Ayanna Presley, the original four from, uh, from the group of, uh, what, what were they called? The, the squad. Yeah. You know that every one of them are the equivalent of the Spice Girls? Yeah. They are the political Spice Girls because little Justice spice Democrat. Girls. That's awesome. Yeah, Justice Democrats put out a call, a casting call, and they took ten thousand applicants. They needed a Hispanic girl. They found a uh, Dumbelina, AOC. They needed uh, a Palestinian. They found Rashida Tlaib. They needed uh, a Muslim woman. They found Ilhan Omar. They needed a black woman. They found Ayala, Ayala uh, Presley. Yes. Yeah. So there it is. That's they were recruited. They were not in politics, any of them. They were recruited Obama to was do a bartender. this. She, What's was that? A bartender. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. She was a bartender, but she beat out like thousands and thousands of people to be chosen to run for Congress. So that's why I said they are the equivalent. The the because... squad is the political Spice Girls. No, that was because some some guy on the committee desired her. Well, I'm not talking about committees. I'm talking about just getting no, to the Congress. The committee that was choosing the people. Well, you know how, how she said that Republicans desired her, that's why she had a problem? Well, how'd she get picked? Because uh, somebody on the committee desired her. How do you think the uh, Miss Americas used to be picked? Right. Well, I mean, I don't think Republicans chose AOC. They didn't even know that they no, were even but, but, being uh, chosen. No, let me explain. Uh, you didn't see her comment that the reason the Republicans um, didn't like her is because they desired her sexually? You didn't see that? Uh, oh, quote? well, <laughs> I didn't see that quote. You know, look, she's still struggling to figure out what a uh, garbage disposal is, okay? <laughs> she's not very bright. Uh, we keep telling her to put her head in the thing, and when it spins, go ahead and put your head in it. But she hasn't figured that out yet, so, you know, maybe in time she will. Many years ago, I used to cover the Miss America con- contest, and the closing t- uh, the time for, for uh, our edition of Newark News, which was a big paper at the time, was 10 o'clock. So uh, at, the, um, at the 9 o'clock, they would come to me and tell me who was going to be the Miss America, okay? So I could write mm-hmm. my story. And, and make the deadline. You know, um, the only reason I bring that story up is a lot of things are rigged. 
and so uh, mm -hmm. when I say about her, yeah, including our elections. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming around to your view. I've seen some. Oh, no, <laughs> good. It's only, it's only your taking view. you four years. Hey, you know what? Uh, better late than never, right? But look, seriously, Don. Let me ask you the question. No, no, no. Let me ask you a serious question about the uh, beauty pageants and Miss America. Were they all women when you were there? Oh, <laughs> boy. <laughs> He's like, I'm not touching that one. Uh, yeah, I mean, what's the shock value now if you were to cover the uh, beauty pageants now and you have men pretending to be women or whatever? Uh, a I mean, there was a contest huh? in, the, whether in Nebraska or sexuals competed. What's happened? Well, well if, if they had two transsexuals competed in a uh, in a beauty contest and it was held in Kansas, I would have been there with a press pass. Hey, but... have you ever gone? <laughs> have you ever gone to one of these shows? Um, you like know, a... actually, I um um uh, I I got to guest judge the qualifier in Wichita, Kansas, for the Miss Kansas pageant. Uh, that okay. was the wildest deal. Oh yeah, they were all women, but it was the okay, wildest good. deal because they, they, they had us all show up at this high school where they did it and they had us, uh, they, they put all four of us judges in a room and then they gave us these score sheets and they had the women come in and they had to make their presentations. And then we had to, as soon as they left. Uh, they would have one woman come in, we would interview him, she would make her presentation, and then she would leave, and then we would all talk, and then we would score it, and then we would do that again with the, the next woman. We did that all the way till we got like all eight or ten of them. And then mm -hmm. they had us all go to the arena part of it, and we sat there at the judges table, and they all came out and did their whatever skill you know, they had, whether they were singing or, you know, tumbling or do, do, doing whatever. <laughs> and then we made the decision and then they counted up the, you know, they had somebody else count up the, the scores and then they announced the winner. So mm -hmm. it was, I, I, it was, I, I, it was, it was a fun little deal. I thought it was kind of hokey, but I was if, glad that I was asked. <laughs> if you don't believe that wasn't rigged, I'll eat my hat. You didn't uh, title total up. Somebody else did. Somebody else did, yes, because they wanted to have an impartial you know, deal, supposedly. Well, there used to be a place in New York <laughs> called Tony Pastors where they used to have on Monday nights uh, uh, transsexuals uh, uh, dress up as wi uh, women. And I went to one of those things one night, and I have to tell you, you couldn't tell the difference between the, the those men who were dressed and the women who were in the audience. Uh, you, you have no idea. <laughs> this is an amazing end of the oh, show boy. today. What, is, it, is this the scene from the birdcage? <laughs> Are you Gene Hackman from the birdcage on the This is out? an What's amazing end of the show today. <laughs> Where do you think the birdcage um, was created? <laughs> <laughs> well, wasn't it based off of a <laughs> French play? There's all, all sorts of shows. <laughs> Well, you know, you know what's funny. You 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 bring up the 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 drag show thing. There is, mm -hmm. and I just I I've got to get her on this show at some point because she is amazing. I have this friend who is she's in Wichita, Kansas. She is transgender, but she is the biggest Republican you'd ever meet, and she freaking hates drag queens. She's <laughs> She's constantly going off on drag queens to me. <laughs> and well, it's look, just amazing. I covered Drag Time Story Hour back in 2019, okay? Yeah. And, you know, three years later is when it kind of got really big and people were talking about it and this and that. Look, whatever you want to do in the privacy of your own home or if you want to go to a club at 3 o'clock in the morning and dress up like some fruitcake, go ahead and do it. <laughs> Just don't do it in front of the children. That's the problem. That's what everybody has an issue with, doing things yes. and sexually 
you know, subjugation to children. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a form of child sexual abuse. It truly is. I mean, yes. if you're dressed up like that in front of, you know, seven, eight, nine-year-old or even younger children at a library, at a library, I mean, come on. This is political. It is a way to strip away the innocence of a child, and it is grooming. And again, you know, look, a lot of people say it's the LGBTQ, right? Uh Uh-uh. It's LGBTQP for pedophile. They support pedophilia, plain and simple. And all you have to do is look at Drag Time Story Hour, which is borderline pedophilia. How many times have these freaks been dancing or showing their private parts to little children? I mean, this, should, this is not art, okay? This is sexual deprivation in a, in a way in which they are endangering these children. And I think it should stop. I think it's terrible. And again, it's not about freedom of speech. Yeah. Get away yeah. from the children. Could be very, absolutely. You're so right, Josh. Yeah. You're so right. Well, I don't want to be right. I want this stuff to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I just want the stuff to Kennedy stop. Kennedy from Louisiana reading those two books that are in the library for children. Oh, yeah. the the uh, disgusting, yeah. explicit, erotic yeah. books. Yes. Yeah, it's um, it's unbelievable. And then they fight to have these books, you know, put there for children. Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, they, they should be behind all, if they're going to be there, because I don't believe in banning books, I don't believe in all that, but if you're going to have these books, it, you'd, ha- you'd have to be 18 years of age or older, and they'd have to be up high where children can't get to them behind a locked, you know, area or something. I mean, seriously, what's the difference between these books and, let's say, an X-rated video at this point? Not much, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't understand this necessity to strip away a child's innocence. I don't understand why they want to do this to children and confuse children and scare children. I'm sure it's, you know, if a four or five year old child sees a six foot four, 250 pound man, you know, with a beard dressed up in a woman's, you know, outfit and skirt and everything with a fake wig on, I'm sure that would scare the living daylights out of a little kid like that. Scare the daylights out of me. It's scare the yeah, daylights out of me. <laughs> exactly. I'd have nightmares for weeks. <laughs> uh, well, as as we wrap up here, let's start. Yeah, Jiggy, we got to do this more often, buddy. We've 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 got to we got to do this more often because this that this that this is some fun stuff. Um, yeah, you gotta you gotta send this one to me for we, sure. Let's start with uh, Don. Bring us up to speed on on how the book's doing and everything, my friend. Well, I can't tell you how. The Ruler of the Seas just came out this week. Uh, it's available on Amazon. Um, uh, there's 2SBDigest.com, uh, hashtag 2SBDigest. And as you know, the National Robotics Education Foundation, the hyphen N-R-E-F dot, dot org. Fantastic. Well, Josh, uh, it has been fun. Bring us up to speed on all your stuff. Yep, jbushow.com stands for Josh Bernstein Uncensored.com. Either one of those URLs will get to, to the same place. We've got a, uh, an interview with Marjorie Taylor Greene on the homepage. We've got other recent interviews, uh, Alan Dershowitz, uh, many others. So check out the free interview section and then head on over to the new releases section and become a subscriber. That's where you'll get the stuff that's even too hot for social media. And remember, if it's banned on social media, it's found there. Awesome. Well, I'm going to say, you've got to get me on your program one time, Josh, so I can play <laughs> my book, if nothing else. Uh, well, it'll, 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 be a, it'll be a fun time. It, it, w- it won't be a walk in the park for you, but it'll be respectful, <laughs> and, uh, and it'll be spirited. How's that? Okay. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we'll have to try to set something up for you, buddy. I appreciate it. I uh, I want this book to be a success because I got two others, and I really uh, all of this material is based on real facts that the government will release in two years. So I want to get in ahead of there. That's awesome. Gotcha. That's awesome. Well, gentlemen, thanks for doing this. I will send this over to you, Josh, here in just a few moments, and 
I'll talk to you guys later. There he goes. That you got is it. Don God bless. Zella and fantastic Josh Bernstein. And uh, that was quite the little, the little show.